guys, this is Kelly here, and today on my channel, um, I'm going to be talking about how to paint a winter guard or um, indoor drum line or whatever um, group that you're doing, how to paint the um, vinyl floor that you guys have. Um, basically, I'll go over everything about what the floor is, um, what the material is, how our group did it for this season, and everything about it with pictures at the end to show you the final result of our floor. So if you'd like to know more and get an inside look at my group's floor for this 2015 season, then stay tuned. What the heck is a color guard or a winter guard or indoor percussion floor? Well, basically, um, if you don't know winter guard or um, indoor percussion, it's basically the flags that you see at a football game. Um, they, their off season in the winter season is the time where they perform with a billboard kind of vinyl flooring, um, and they take that into the gym, they roll it out, and then they march on it and perform on it. Um, if you would like to know more about it, you can always search on Google or YouTube, they have videos, just search Winter Guard shows or indoor percussion shows. Um, a great site that has a lot of them is WGI. So definitely go to WGI.com and they have a lot of information about what is pretty much Winter Guard and indoor percussion. So if you would like information, there is that. To give you an example of how big our floor is this year, 50 feet this way and 50 feet that way, but our floor is cut at a squiggle line. So basically the floor, if you're viewing it from the audience perspective, our floor starts from here, it comes up and then does like a S-shaped pattern um, to the top. So it snakes down kind of. So. It's not really a 50 by 50, but that is how long and how wide it is. The material that it's printed on is called vinyl, and um, that's basically what the floor um, material is. So um, painting that, you want to get um, exterior paint and have it be flat or a matte finish. You don't want anything like shimmery or... Um, like a satin or sheen or glossy, you want none of that. So you want flat or matte um, texture on your paint because of marching on it, you don't want anyone to slip on it. So that's what it is. Before you even think about painting the floor, you need to think about your design. So your design um, for my floor, um, I was the one that created our design concept for our floor and our whole, our whole design concept for our show and um, with the help of my boyfriend, um, but the def definitely the floor was my baby, my pride and joy and I'm excited how it turned out. Uh, we are doing, um, our show production is called Written in Stone, so we basically did a, um, a pathway in a garden. And that's the basically the whole theme of our show is statues in a garden. So on the floor, um, I'll show I'll insert a clip of the picture somewhere on the screen of the actual like blueprint that I sketched up of the floor. Um, it's basically a stone pathway, and on the edges of the floor is um, grass, so um, merged into the pathway, so blended in. Um, Basically, the tan is the base layer of the walkway. The stones are in the brown color. Um, the grass, we laid down the base of green, um, the medium green. And then with the darker green, we sponged on the dark green with a big sponge to create like that texture. The dimension that um, the judges or the audience would like to see on our floor. So eight hours it took, um, I mean there's few people coming in and out to help us with the floor but um, on average we had four to five people helping on the floor 
at once. We had a little bit more than that, but that was our lowest number of people that we had painting the floor together. It did take us eight hours. So definitely if you wanna paint your floor, um, I would definitely suggest to allow a full complete day of just straight up painting. Um, don't leave the floor on there, just, just, just get into the zone and start painting your floor because it is going to take a while depending on your design obviously. Um, I had a very intricate design for our floor so that obviously took a lot more time so take that into consideration when you're painting your floor. Sweeping the floor and cleaning it, making sure that it's rid of all dust, debris, um, it's just to clean and make sure that you have a good base layer for the paint to stick to the vinyl. Um, after we clean the floor, I, since I was the sketcher of the floor, um, they nominated me to draw out the design on the floor. Makes sense. So I, ha I took um, just regular um, chalk and I took that chalk and started sketching out the outlines of the pathway um, so I knew it wasn't going to follow those exact outlines because the grass was going to overlap onto the pathway but I wanted to know exactly where the stones were going to be um, in the generalistic area of where they were going to be. So I sketched out the pathway and started sketching out the stone patterns. As I was sketching I would stand up and look at it um, make sure that I was it was looking all together and everything and then go back down to sketching it and everything. Stones first and painted that in the dark brown. Um, after that, after they had all the stones painted, they came back into the pathway and painted um, the inlay. Um, it would be pretty much the cement or whatever of the pathway. Um, they came in with that tan color and went into every individual stone and did all the inlays throughout the whole thing. It itself was the most tedious process because we could not use a roller. Um, usually when you're painting a floor this size you use a roller but um, we could not because of the small spaces and how the stones were laid out and everything like that you just can't use a roller. Um, you needed to use a paintbrush so we did the whole pathway in a paintbrush. So um, that definitely took a lot of time and a lot of effort. Um, that was definitely the bulk of the time. Um, and after that, they were like, why did you draw so many stones? And I was like, "We, it's going to look good, I promise. So, um, so that's that. Um, we finished the pathway and then as we were getting close to being done with the, um, the inlay for the stones, um, we had people going in with rollers now. This is the easiest part. Um, basically, we would roll on the medium green on the edges and then we would use drop cloths to make sure that it wouldn't get on the concrete that it was laying on top of. Um, and basically, you just roll it on. We had to wait for that green to completely set and dry before we went over with the dark green. Now once we went over with the dark green, I basically, this was a very fast process also, I took a really big sponge, um, kind of like the industrial grade sponge at like Home Depot or Lowe's or a hardware store. Um, it's a very big sponge, it was like this big and that big, it was huge. Um, so I took the sponge and I took a tray of paint um, with the darker green and basically sponged um, the dark green, make sure to leave kind of like spaces of the medium green peeking through so it would add the dimension and it would just not look like blobs of dark green just thrown on everywhere. So it actually looked like there was a, a reason behind it. So um, after I did the dark green, um, the floor was done. To let your paint dry completely no wet spots at all. It has to be dry completely. Um, once it's dried completely, um, our paint, since it was the exterior um, paint and it was, I mean, good quality paint, I mean, I don't know if this goes for all of the paints um, used, but for our experience, our paint dried very fast. And we live in Florida, so it was happening in Tampa, Florida, so um, I guess obviously 
it was hot um so I guess that helped that definitely helped with it you have to put um since it is vinyl um vinyl is a very like slippery material um it's not very porous so it can't attach to the paint very well um by itself so you have to um set it with um basically it's like makeup you set your makeup with powder you have to set the floor with powder so um basically you have to spray um not spray um sprinkle cornstarch um a layer of cornstarch over the floor um not baby powder because baby powder just doesn't work i don't know why um just cornstarch let it do its job let the paint set um make sure that everything's good to go um, nothing is smearing everything like that um i would suggest to leave it out for 24 hours for a day leave it overnight um but we didn't um we didn't have the luxury to do that so um we had to after we put on the cornstarch we basically swept over the floor um with like a swiffer mop and we got all the excess cornstarch off of it and then rolled um, not rolled, but um, folded the floor back up and put it on the cart and then put it in a storage unit. Um, and then that's, we were basically done after that. So um, we actually opened the floor today and nothing happened to the floor. Nothing's wrong with it. Um, no cracks. Um, cracks are a big thing with the floor, so definitely no cracks. I definitely love our floor i definitely it was a process painting that floor for eight hours and i had no weekend so it was definitely a struggle the struggle was real with that floor all right so that is it for this today's video um i hope you guys found this video at least a little bit interesting um it is definitely a different video than what a lot of DIY people are used to looking at because I really liked and enjoyed um, this opportunity to share that experience with you and um, to hopefully inspire you if you are a fellow like Winter Guard or um, indoor drumline person to inspire you to um, get ideas about painting your floor and get, get tips and tricks on how they actually do it. So um, I Hope that you enjoyed this. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Definitely don't forget to thumbs up the video and definitely subscribe if you want more DIYs or more, um, more Winter Guard or more indoor drumline videos. You